Hello, this is the second video uh, that covers uh, the tools we will be using in ECEN 2350. Uh, in the first video, I walked through installing Quartus and ModelSim and gave a brief introduction to the DE10 Lite FPGA board. In this video, I'm going to dig deeper into the tools uh, by walking through a simple example and uh, looking at the inputs and outputs of the board uh, and how it works on the DE10 Lite. I have a board here um, installed and plugged into the computer and if you can look at it um, this is the default out-of-the-box configuration so it already has a program running on it that just walks through all of the LEDs and seven segment display um, and then we'll overwrite that with our own uh, program. The program I'm going to walk through uh, will have these requirements. So we'll start at just a high level definition of what we're going to do here um, as we would with any project. Uh, so I'm just going to define two functions that we want to do here, kind of independent of each other. We're going to create an AND gate that ties two switch inputs uh, through the AND gate and driving a single LED as the output. The second function will be an OR gate that takes two button inputs, uh, and the DE10 light calls them key 0 and key 1. Those are the inputs, and we will have LED 1 as the function output. The DE10 light board comes with a, what they call the system CD, which has a bunch of example designs uh, for Quartus, and I've got that shown here, and under the demonstrations folder, uh, we're going to start with this golden top program, and what this has is, is just a basically an empty program that just defines all of the I.O. pins, and there's no logic underneath it. I'm going to make a copy of that uh, folder, and that's what we will start our project from. If we go over to Quartus, now we can open this project and we can go into this directory and open this goldentop.qpf project. And if we open the main Verilog, there's a single Verilog file we can see the module definition now includes all the I.O. pins that are used on the DE10 board. Um, and I'll highlight the ones that we're going to focus on for the class. The clock, there's a 10 megahertz clock and two 50 megahertz clocks, which we'll use later in the class. The DRAM, there's an external DRAM, which we'll not use. The hex are the they're calling it seven segment, but I believe they're actually eight segment since there's a decimal point. Um, the eight segment LEDs, the key, which are the push button momentary switches, and then the 10 output LEDs. Uh, the 10 two position switches are next, and then there's a VGA output, and there's sensors, and some other general purpose I.O. pins. And if you look down here, there's no actual code defined underneath. And that's where we're going to add our custom code. The real advantage of starting with this project is that they've defined the pins and mapped them correctly to the device. And let me just show you what that means. If you go up to the project directory, uh, I'm sorry, the assignment directory, and we go to the pin planner, then you can actually see a map of all the pins on the device. And you can see there's quite a few here. And um, you can, at your own time, you can look at what these different types of pins mean. But if we look down below, we can see all of our actual signal names, our I.O. signals, um, for example, the clocks and the actual pin location um, that it's been assigned to on the FPGA. There's also different I.O. standards, drive strength, and other settings that you can put in here. And you can see that all those uh, signals that are defined in the top level module have a corresponding pin on the device.
let's go ahead and compile this without making any modifications and try downloading it to the board just to make sure that that process works. So we'll go to uh, this arrow here for start compilation. And this will take a few minutes. And now we've finished. And um, we can see that it's basically not using any actual logic in the device. Um, I'm not sure why it shows one. But we can go up to tools and we can go to programmer. And now we can see uh, that it's detected our light uh, device. And I'll put this in here. It's detected, but since I have the DE10 light plugged in, um, it's detected it. And so then I can start programming it. You can see that it's using the USB blaster in JPEG mode. And now we have success. And now we can look at the board itself um, since it completed programming. And you'll see that the individual LEDs are off, but the eight segment LEDs are turned on. And that's because they're active low drive strength, which means a zero will turn on the LED. Um, and so in our program, I think I'll, I'll set those to one uh, just to get them out of the way to make sure they're turned off. So if we go back to the Verilog file, uh, let's add in some actual logic. And so what I've done here is I actually put down my requirements. So I, I've captured those right in the file so we know what our goal is here. And I've created two assignment statements. Um, the first one takes the, two, the first two input switches and ands them together and assigns them to LED zero which should match our uh, require, first requirement. We take an AND gate with the first two switches, outputs it as LED zero. The second assignment, so these are continuous assignment statements. The second one takes the, the LED R1 uh, as the output of an OR gate, and the OR gate inputs are the two uh, momentary buttons, which are called key zero and key one. So let's try to compile this. I'll save this and see if this compiles. So now it did finish, but I got an error. And so let's look at what this error is. So it's complaining about key 0 and key 1 not being declared. And if we look up here, I called them key 0 and key 1. And if I look up here, this is actually a, a two-bit array, and so I need to I need to make those array indices. So that was my mistake. So let's compile again. Okay, so now the second time through this did work without error, and now we can see we have three logic elements. Uh, I'm going to go back to the Verilog code and add in some assignments to drive our hex LEDs uh, actually to FF. So I'm doing, I'm going to just make these all high just to turn off the LEDs. And we'll try that, we'll compile this again. Okay, so now this did compile again successfully. We still have three logic elements um, because it doesn't take a logic element to drive an output to a constant value. So let's uh, program this. So I go down to Programmer and I hit Start. And now we can see that the LEDs, the, the hex LEDs are turned off and we should be able to press our buttons And those are not working, so let's look at what we did. Uh, 
Okay, I figured out what's going on. So this actually does work as advertised, except the push button, key zero and key one, are actually active low. And so I have to push both of them. They have to both be pushed in order to turn off this LED. And the on my board, one of the switches broke, and so the AND gate needs both switches turned on, and then you... So I had a couple of little mishaps, so it shows kind of debugging I have to go through. Um, but it does work. Um, I can uh, go back to the uh, the input here and invert the um, the key uh, the push button key switch operator in order to fix that. So we completed uh, recompiling. So let's just test this again. So we'll go back to our programmer. We'll program it again. And now the LED, the push button LEDs are off until you press the button. So I can press each of these. Um, I just, while this was compiling, I went back to our user manual to see if it was documented that this was an active low key switch. And it doesn't explicitly say that, but they show the schematic with pull-up resistors. And so you can see as the button is pressed, then that activates current, uh, which pulls it to ground. Uh, and so that's, that's an active low signal. Um, now in our code, uh, usually it's smart to use notation in your signal names to uh, denote active low signals. So a better way to have done this or a way to make it clearer to the programmer would be to use the term key underscore n uh, zero and one. That, that's a way to, to indicate that it's an active low signal, so you don't have to always be going back to the schematic or some documentation. It follows through to give the, the programmer a hint of how to control these signals.